Hi guys, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Michelle Rue, and today we're going to be doing a micro project together. This one is going to be number four, which is about U.S. Congress. I actually, believe it or not, haven't looked at this one yet, so I'm going to be taking a quick skim of it, and then we'll be able to get started. So grab yourself a snack and a drink and some comfy clothes, and let's nerd out together. Okay guys, snacks acquired. Let's do a little haul. So I have some Himalayan pink salt popcorn. This is my favorite snack of all time. I've eaten like almost half the bag already in one sitting and I also have some matcha so I think we're ready to get started I've taken a look at the micro project it looks really really fun so what are we waiting for let's go together okay let's get started on micro project number four which is U.S. Congress and so the data source that we're going to be using is called Congress Legislators and so if we look real quick at where we're going to be getting it from this is the URL and if you can see right here it ends in CSV so that kind of signals to us that if we want to read it we're going to have to use the read CSV function so let's do that <coughs> sorry we're going to import pandas as always so import pandas as pd and then we're going to use the read CSV function so we're going to do df is equal to pd.read csv and then we're going to put the url into this document right here and so we're going to put it in quotes actually and then let's give it a run okay and then so now we're going to look at how rows are truncated so in pandas um if you have a really really big data set with lots of rows and columns if there are too many then they're going to start using dot 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 to skip over it so it'll show you like the header and the footer and then they're going to like leave out the ones in the middle so here we're going to see like what that number is like how many do they show before they you know use the dot 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 so if we do the max columns function pd.get option with display max columns you'll see right here the output is 20 so that means that um, they start truncating after we have 20. and so what we want to do actually is update the value for display.max columns in using this function right here so pd.set option and so we're going to set the display max columns options to 50. so we're going to do pd.set option and then our option name that we want is display.max columns and let's actually put that in quotes and then we're going to set it to 50 so that's going to be our second argument and then let's run it so now it's going to be 50 instead and then in addition to that they want us to set the maximum rows um, to you know 50 as well so let's do that Okay, and so now we can actually go through and display a new data frame. And so as you can see right here, we have now 50 different things. So looks good. And then let's run our test case to make sure that everything looks good. All test pass is a good sign. So now we can move on to part two. So we're gonna be working with dates and pandas. And so the first thing that we're gonna do is see what kind of standard is followed in our data set for displaying dates. Cause you know, there's a lot of different ways to like display dates. You can do like month slash date slash year. You could do year first. You could do with like the dashes and no dashes at all. So let's take a look. Look, at, looks like it's um, option one. So it's gonna be year, month, day. Okay. So now we're going to convert an ISO formatted date into a date time data type. And so we're going to do that with this function called to date time. So we're going to do a new column in our data frame called birthday underscore DT that scores that stores the birthday date as a date time. So we're going to do PD dot to date time. And then the column is going to be birthday. This is basically going to create a new column in our data frame with this um, birthday in the special formatted way. So it's going to look like this. And then the D type is going to be updated to date time 64 NS instead of object. So let's run some test cases and make sure we did it correctly. Looks good. Okay, so now we're going to use some date time operations. As you can see here, we can use a bunch of different functions on our new column, including like dot month, dot day, dot year. And so what they want us to do is add a new column to DF called day of birth that contains the day of birth for the member of Congress. So let's do that first. So we're going to do DF day of birth. And then we're going to do is equal to DF birthday underscore DT. And then we want the day. So dot DT dot day. All right, and we're gonna do something very similar, but we're gonna do month now for the second column. We're gonna just replace this with day of, or sorry, month of birth now. And then we're gonna do dt.month. 
and then we're gonna run this real quick. Okay, and then let's run some test cases to make sure we did it correctly. Looks good. And so now we're ready to create our first ever scatter plot. And so we're going to use df.plot.scatter. And our scatter plot is going to have the x axis being the day and the y axis being the month. So let's do that. We're going to use df.plot.scatter. And then we're going to do x is equal to the day, day of birth. Keep that in quotes. And then y is equal to the month of birth. Put that in quotes too. Okay, and then let's run it and see. So here it is. So this is our scatter plot. So you can see it goes from 1 to 12 for the month on the y axis and then 0 to 31 for the x axis. Okay, so analysis a day without a birthday celebration. So as you can see, this is a data set with all of the Congress birthdays. But we can see what they want us to look for is let's find a date that no member of Congress has a birthday on. And they want us to use the current year as the year. So um, if we look for honestly any of the ones that don't have any dots. So this looks like, um, let's see, this column's 10. This looks like January, sorry, no, December 8th. So let's try that. So again, the, t the format they want us to use for a date is going to be year, month, and then day. Make sure they're all two digits long. So no Congress birthday celebrated on um, December 8th. All right, so let's see if this was correct. It looks good. All tests passed. So now we're going to do something called... Um, so now we're going to show some popular birthdays. And so we're going to edit our scatter plot to provide an alpha value to make some of the data points partially transparent. And so what that is going to be able to do is if we are able to make them all slightly transparent, because right now we can't tell like how many Congress people are born on a certain day, right? We know like which days they were born on, but we don't know like, like if we compare two dates, like who has more, right? However, if we make these all slightly transparent, then we can see kind of like how dark a dot is on the scatter plot. And that'll tell us like if there's more or less people on it. So we're going to copy paste our code from the scatter plot. We're going to add a new argument called alpha. I'm going to do alpha is equal to 0.2. And so that basically makes our, makes our data points 80% transparent. So let's run it and see if it looks any different. Okay, so now you can see like these lighter dots are going to be the ones with less Congress people born on it. And these darker dots are going to be the ones with more Congress people born on it. Okay, and so now let's find some popular days for birthdays. So they want us to find a date in ISO format for a day that has at least four members um, of Congress that have their birthday together. So we're going to look for a darker dot. So let's look right here. This looks like February 2nd. So that is going to be a dark one. So let's put that in. May 2025, February 2nd. And this is going to be popular Congress birthday. So let's give it a run. Okay, looks good. And let's do a test case real quick to make sure that we did it correctly. Looks good also. And so now we have one final question about birthdays in our last part of the analysis for today, which is, are senators or representatives older? So let's figure out. So what we're going to do is calculate the age of each member of Congress. So we're going to import date time. And what we can do is do something called date time dot now to get like the current um, date and time. And then we can do some subtraction to figure out the age. So let's run this little box right here. Okay. And so what we are going to do now, now that we have a time delta, is we can actually divide by another time delta to get a numeric value. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this previous calculation, and then what we're going to do is divide it by 365.25 days. So this currently gives us how, like how many days old they are, but we're going to divide it by 365 to get the years. Okay, so you can see like this 24237 days is now 66. Okay. And so we're going to assign the calculation that we did above to a new column in the data frame called age to sort each new member's age. So what we're going to do here is we're going to copy paste this calculation and we're going to do df age is equal to this. Alrighty. Looks good. Let's run a test case real quick to make sure that we did it correctly. I'll test fast. That's a good sign. And so now what we're going to do is create two new data frames that have information about the House and the Senate. So if you look right here, um, the representatives from the House of Representatives represent a district. So that's encoded in the district column. And their type is going to be rep. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into DF, the data frame, and then we're going to look for DF type. And we're going to say equals equals 
breadth for the house. So this will give us all of the people in the House of Representatives. And then similarly, we can do this for the Senate as well. So if we run that really quickly, we'll get these are as the senators. So let's check to make sure this column is all senators. OK. And so the last thing we're going to do is create a box plot to answer the question of if senators or representatives are older. So let's create a box plot. We're going to use df.plot.box. And we're going to do by equals type. I'm basically just following all of these arguments for right now. Column equals age, title equals current age of members of Congress by chamber. And then let's do some other ones. Let's make it horizontal by doing vertical equals false, grid equals true to get a grid in there, and then fig size equals six for to adjust our figure size. Okay, and then if we run it, we have our new box plot. So it looks really, really cool. So this box plot is for senators, and this box plot is for representatives. And a quick rundown right here, if you look at a box and whisker plot, this line right here is like the absolute minimum and the absolute maximum. The green line in the middle is going to be our median, and then this is our lower quartile and upper quartile. So these, this is one-fourth, 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 same down below. So let's answer some questions real quick. Um, so is the average median age of representatives or senators older? So representatives is going to be right here around like, what, 58? And then senators is, senators is going to be like around 65. So senator, senators are definitely older. Um, is the youngest representative older than the youngest senator? How old is that person? So the youngest representative is going to be like, what, 38? And senator is, um, sorry, 28 and 38. So looks like the youngest rep is younger. And then is the oldest representative younger than the oldest senator? So senator looks like it's like, oh my gosh, 92? Oh my lord, oh my gosh, okay. And this one's 88, so not some old people, but looks like the oldest senator is older. And so what is the oldest age you can be and still younger than half of all the senators in the Senate? So if we want the age that like the halfway point for the senators, it's gonna be right here. So the um, you can be 65 ish and still be younger i guess 64 and still be younger than half the senators in the senate so it's pretty old um but yeah isn't that really cool so i'm glad we were able to do that real quick and so our last step is going to be some submission okay so it looks like it's all done grading and we got 100 percent as always if one of your parts didn't pass make sure you go back to that specific section to check it out and yeah, that concludes micro project number four. Thank you guys so much for coming along with me. I hope you guys had fun coding together. Um, and I can't wait to code more with you guys. Bye.